Hi, everybody. The end of the day. So hopefully this will be uh, informative. Um, and uh, I saw a few of my friends who came here from Canada, like me, uh, presented this morning on the Canadian uh, fintech landscape. So um, uh, we will potentially have some interesting overlap, but I will make sure to add some, some uh, zing to it if you stay. Um, <laughs> it's OK. All right. Uh, and you know what? A chance to talk about Canada. Uh, I'm a very proud Canadian. Um, I'm here because the government of Canada wants uh, people like us who are investment champions to come and talk to other countries and tell you all about us. So um, I can do that and be pretty excited about it. Um, working? Clicker? Um, all right, <laughs> there we go. So uh, this is um, my clever 23-year-old vice president's um, work. He said, why don't you call it FinTech, the new maple syrup? So I don't know if you know Canada, Canada actually is um, the largest producer of maple syrup in the world, um, almost 90% of the maple syrup produced in the world is produced in Canada, and actually in Quebec. Um, and there's a theme, I think, along those lines as well, given uh, the fintech community in Quebec. Um, so really uh, quickly about me, um, I spent 25 years in uh, corporate roles. And I was, um, uh, I, I call myself an innovator. I was an innovator all the way through. And, uh, and my last role was with one of the biggest fintech companies in the world um, called Finastra, and I was head of global innovation. Um, and I started um, FGS because I felt it was time to uh, help financial institutions and large tech incumbents and uh, startups to um, collaborate and do good work in Canada. And, uh, and I saw an opportunity to, to do that. So that's what FGS is. We're an accelerator for corporate innovation, and we're an accelerator for the growth of startups. I thought this was kind of interesting in that how, just how big Canada is uh, as compared to Switzerland. Um, and from a population standpoint, how, you know, uh, comparatively, we're not that much bigger. So and for us, that creates some interesting uh, dynamics. I think both opportunities and challenges, um, but uh, uh, thought that could be something that um, we could keep in mind. So um, FinTech, obviously the time is now. Um, actually, the time is yesterday. And uh, what we're seeing now with banks like BBVA or USAA or um, uh, lots, I'm sure, of, of financial institutions all around the world that have gotten a head start at transformation and um, uh, adopting digital technology um, and changing business models, they are farther ahead. Um, the challenge we're facing is that those that haven't are, uh, are going to struggle. And so you see some of these, uh, you know, kind of news uh, um, headlines in the news. And it's very interesting that even this past year, we saw one of the, I mean, the largest um, uh, amount of investment, and this is globally, this is not just in Canada, um, and how we, uh, you know, the increase of $26 billion um, in investment. When I started the company, we were predicting a high of $19 billion globally overall um, in 2017, so that was about three years ago. Um, that uh, we were predicting that far out, and we've blown way past that. Um, Canada itself is a, is a trade powerhouse. Um, we have uh, lots of folks here from uh, the embassy here, from Global Affairs. Uh, we're all pretty excited about the new NAFTA agreement that was struck yesterday. And really, it will just continue to give us this great position in the marketplace um, to uh, you know, be that bridge between other countries and continue to grow 
at a really strong rate. Um, the competitive business environment uh, is interesting given where Canada is positioned against other G7 countries, um, which is something to be very proud of. And we're also in the top 10 with respect to um, uh, doing business uh, in the G20. So um, in Canada, we have, I think, one of our biggest strengths is our talent. Uh, again, some more stats, you know, we invest the most in terms of R&D in higher education than countries like, you know, France, UK, US even. Um, we have one of the world's best talent pools uh, because of that and because of some other reasons. And some of the top um, educated talent in the world. And, and that probably is a point that I could spend more time on, but uh, I think, you know, the Canadian universities and specifically some of the areas like um, Waterloo, Kitchener-Waterloo, uh, uh, you know, and the corridor between Kitchener-Waterloo and Toronto, uh, there are some, I think, 300,000 students in universities um, just in that area alone. So, you know, from a talent perspective, we have a very uh, deeply skilled, large talent pool. And from a talent access perspective, you know, we are actually a country that, you know, wants to bring more talent in. And we do a pretty good job of helping them do that with support from our uh, government. So, uh, Toronto is one of the more highly educated workforces. Uh, this is a North American comparison. Um, and uh, I'll skip through this one really quickly. Last year, we actually created more jobs than Silicon Valley. So that's pretty unbelievable uh, for a country um, uh, like ours that has been known for you know, being strong, stable, risk averse. So lots is happening. Uh, the Toronto, uh, they were formerly called the Toronto Financial Services Alliance, uh, uh, promotes the city of Toronto. And this is one of their slides that talks about uh, Toronto itself. And there's no question that Toronto has more fintech companies, more uh, talent, more uh, in the area of, in terms of more universities and so on, um, and, and has a lot to be proud of in terms of the, um, the opportunity that exists there. Uh, but so does Montreal. So uh, just in the last couple of months, I've spent quite a bit of time in Montreal uh, working with new organizations. One's called the Holt Accelerator, which is a organization that was just stood up by a family, um, uh, it, that the Holt family, um, and some other local talent. They just had their first uh, cohort competition, over 600 applications from all over the world. We talked to people, uh, and did interviews with people on the phone from Spain and uh, places in South America and just all over the world. And, um, and so Montreal is really sort of making its, you know, bold step forward in um, trying to compete in, in Canada for some of this acclaim and, and talent. And they say they have the largest uh, concentration of tech jobs in Canada in, in, uh, in Montreal. What's interesting is uh, e almost every week we see another company saying they're setting up a shop in Toronto. So, um, and I'm sure this is, you know, the greater Toronto area and other parts of, of, I think there's something like six new Amazon distribution centers that have established in, in Canada over the last uh, year or so. So pretty unbelievable. Um, some of us are a little worried about what this is going to do to our, you know, uh, competition for jobs for our startups, but nonetheless, it's good for our, uh, our economy. So we have more than a thousand fintech startups in Canada, and that probably is going to just keep on um, growing. The three years ago, the prediction was that we would get go from 200 to 500. Um, so uh, all of this is sort of creating that, you know, kind of conditions uh, in Canada for, you know, new companies to get started. We also see a ton of newcomers. We uh, work with a large um, company 
it's uh, part of the Ontario Teachers uh, Pension uh, Portfolio, which is one of the top, and in the top three largest pension portfolios in the world. And we work with one of their big portfolio companies. And we were having lunch with a company that came to uh, Toronto to see whether or not they wanted to set up shop there and uh, do business in North America. Uh, we just happened to be having a conversation about what they do. They're an AI as a services company. Um, and one meeting, um, and we already found them some business. So um, it's a really interesting time for, uh, for companies both coming in as well as companies that exist there. The Canadian fintech ecosystem is actually really huge. Uh, and so when I was when I was working at uh, Finastra, running innovation, you know, you're in your four walls as a big, big beast technology company, and you think you know everything. Um, and then when I stepped out and started my own company, um, it was astounding to me how many uh, companies, how many different players there are in the ecosystem. So, for example, uh, you've probably heard of Mars. If if you haven't. Uh, we talk about Mars a lot uh, globally, or people talk about Mars a lot. We actually have about 500 accelerators in Canada. In Toronto alone, there's over 30. So, and and actually, there's uh, accelerators uh, other than Mars that are doing a, um, di all different kinds of things, but that are successfully churning out companies like I'm not sure if you've heard of any of these, but. Borowell, Sensible, um, Zensurance, all of them have raised millions of dollars and have started their companies just in the last couple of years with the uh, Ryerson's DMZ, for example. Uh, Communitech has over 700 companies uh, there in the Kitchener-Waterloo area. And, you know, and it goes on. So we have tons of investors, we have tons of startups, we have, <laughs> we, have we should just have a, this amazingly huge fintech ecosystem. Um, and I'm going to spend a bit of time, because you know you've probably seen some slides about Canadian fintechs, and I want to get uh, Rob's from Information Venture Partners, because he had way more logos. Um, but uh, this is uh, just an example, and you might see some names that you that might be familiar. Trulio is a global uh, company. Uh, their first round of investment was $25 million. They do business all over the world. They're becoming one of the sort of new ways to uh, 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 validate, validate your identity uh, using other sources of data other than the, your traditional sources. Um, and, and, you know, lots more that have also started to see success outside of um, Canada uh, and really doing um, a good job outside of Canada. One of the challenges, though, is that we're, we're not necessarily um, as strong selling our own Canadian fintech solutions to our own Canadian um, financial institutions. And so that's one of the challenges. And speaking of which, you know, we have five or seven um, big financial institutions. Um, the other two, so the five which are all based in uh, the Toronto area. The other two are based in Montreal. Um, they are leapfrogging the five. So they are being extremely innovative, aggressive. They have venture funds. They have um, accelerators. They've, you know, uh, invested directly in companies. It's a really interesting uh, time. So, but you know, I think some of them are starting to see the light. These are the different ways that we're seeing in Canada. They're investing. Uh, their time to try and, you know, sort of figure out how to respond to disruption. Um, and, uh, and I would say for the most part, they start on the far right side of the, um, of this page. But, uh, but, you know, pretty much every financial institution in Canada has some uh, toe in each one of these waters, I guess, um, is one way to put it. There are uh, lots of, uh, you know, interesting success stories with accelerators, um, you know, between the banks and the accelerators. Some would still criticize that this 
is still a little bit of innovation theater. And I think it, it, there are definitely cases of that. Um, I think most of that has to do with the immaturity of the accelerator and the corporate support they provide and the newness of innovation inside of a financial institution. Uh, I don't think the intention is to spend millions of dollars on theater, uh, largely. Although I could tell you one story, uh, but I won't, uh, where it definitely was. Um, this is actually, I think, kind of something that Canada could be proud of. We have, these are our big five banks, so RBC, TD, uh, Bank of Montreal, Scotia, NCIBC. Um, they are partnering a ton. So it's actually, you know, uh, interesting in that, number one, we know about them, they get announced. Not a lot of fanfare all the time, uh, necessarily. Uh, but RBC, for instance, has definitely made it s seem like they're saying they're going to be an Amazon. They're going to be a platform. They're not going to necessarily try and compete with their own products. In fact, they're investing in creating products, uh, uh, standalone businesses. Um, but who knows? We'll see. So lots of interesting partnering is happening. And, and now we get into sort of AI, which I think, again, was probably covered a bit today. But this is one of our sort of uh, big strengths in Canada is that we are investing a ton in artificial intelligence. And, um, you know, some of, the, some of the stats on here are pretty impressive uh, in terms of how much we're investing, how many companies um, are in the, uh, in the market in Canada, and um, some of the success stories like TD uh, bought Layer 6, Really, what they bought was data scientists. Um, we, uh, you know, uh, Element AI, I think I mentioned yesterday, if you were here, um, they have just exploded. I think there's, you know, probably well north of 500 employees now. Uh, just a lot of really great things happening in AI. And then this, I think, might have been up this morning. So, this is Element AI's uh, founder. Uh, he has a blog. So, if you want to know more about, um, AI in Canada, you can go to the, there's a blog address on the far um, corner of the slide. Uh, Jean-Francois uh, Gagné, he's the founder. He actually tracks all of these AI companies across uh, Canada. And so in the last year, he started it last year, this is this year's, and um, it was about 100 new companies, so 550 to 650. And then what's interesting here is that we're seeing some new artificial intelligence hubs forming. Um, and uh, Edmonton, and then Alberta in general, I would predict that next year you'll see quite a bit of um, increased uh, activity there. RBC's invested in um, a, a bunch of activities in Edmonton and, and Calgary from an artificial intelligence standpoint, but clearly still um, Toronto and Montreal. I shouldn't leave out Vancouver. It's just that Vancouver is a very uh, tech-focused hub as opposed to fin-tech-focused hub. But nonetheless, it's still a lot of really great um, companies. And then we also have a, an interesting focus on cybersecurity. I don't think it's talked about as much. Um, but, you know, when I, uh, this was a, some information that the uh, uh, TFSA um, provided and where Canada is the fourth most active uh, country in the world for cybersecurity deals. That, that actually surprised me. Um, and, uh, but clearly we've got some really great companies like BlackBerry and OpenText who have, who have kind of paved the way um, for that. And then, you know, blockchain. Blockchain um, uh, is, some will say that Canada is still one of the leaders and the founders and I'm kind of afraid of going to Zug uh, <laughs> tonight and tomorrow because um, I'm sure that there's way more expertise there uh, than, uh, than I certainly have in my, in my own brain about blockchain and how Canada stacks up. But, but we've, got, we've got companies like Nuco, uh, and, uh, who's founded by Matt Spoke, who started Deloitte's blockchain lab and then quickly left and started his own company. 
um, and then all of these other players in the ecosystem in blockchain. So everyone, every logo on this page is a member of the Blockchain Research Institute um, and have, has some significant activity happening in blockchain. And the, um, uh, there was some news this week that there's a consortium that's just been founded. And I think it's Matt, Sco Matt Spoke and um, Michelle Romanoff, who's one of the big uh, entrepreneurs in Canada. She's the founder of ClearBank. She's also on Dragon's Den. Um, they're founding this group that's trying to figure out how to actually advance um, advance things in, the, in, in Canada with respect to blockchain. IBM is very, very active in blockchain um, and is doing a, quite a bit of work with some of the big incumbents. So, and I think that that's it. <laughs>